Podium. Okay. Good morning. Um, good morning, wie auch immer. Um, this um, is a, yeah, kind of a lecture um, called Hacking ICAN, Tactics to Hack the Individual into the ICAN System. Um, I'm Andy Muller Magoon. I was actually elected for three years to be the European representative in the ICAN board. Um, so in 2003, they kind of not only threw me out, but changed the structure um, to a more indirect um, way to introduce or to integrate the user's opinions, positions, interests in the ICANN process. And how exactly this works out now is going to be presented by Wendy Seltzer, um, who's kind of this lady here. Uh, Wendy has been um, attorney at law at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, uh, is like a member of the at large advisory committee, which is the yeah, kind of uh, institution she's going to introduce to us how users' interests are being integrated in the ICON process. Um, she's uh, in this role responsible for kids considering and providing advice on the activities of ICON to the ICON board as they relate to the interests of individual internet users. Okay. And that's what they call the at-large community. And then we have um, Annette Mühlberg there, standing proudly uh, to your right. Um, she is member of the board of um, not only the, you're still on the board, right? Of the Verdi trade Us union board. situation? No, no, no. no, no. Okay. Head of e Head of department of e-government, whatever that should be. E-government, yes. New media, public administration at the service union Verdi. She's, she's also co-chairman of Network New Media um, here in Berlin. And uh, she's the former chairman and now one of the three current European members of the at-large advisory committee. And um, I mean, she's also going to explain us what, whatever that is. Um, so, yeah, you got the floor. Um, they prepared like a, a 20 minutes or so presentation to um, talk a little bit about how ICANN works, uh, what the policies are that are being discussed and how this process works. And um, then we're going to focus more on, yeah, how the heck are we going to get our positions in there, what, what kind of tactics can we use, what kind of examples do we have, and what kind of struggles uh, do we find there. So, please. All right. Uh, thank you, Andy. Uh, so, we've got here uh, hacking ICANN, uh, slightly different sort of hacking from uh, what you've been seeing in some of the other talks. We're not talking about uh, hacking machines here, but more of a social engineering. Um, nonetheless, we think that we can use some of the uh, terminology of hacking to think about how to get inside this organization and make it work for us. Uh, so we can do packet flooding. Uh, we can send to ICANN uh, dozens or hundreds of comments or applications when it opens up its processes <coughs> to tell it that the public cares about uh, the new top-level domains, uh, it's, if you want. Uh, to add to the .com and .info and .arrow and think you can do better than .coop, uh, send in some comments or uh, help put together an application. Um, we can do uh, Trojan-style attacks, infiltrating the bodies that are currently uh, fairly unrepresentative of the general public, uh, to give them some more public spirit while they continue to operate as though they were uh, merely the intellectual property or business constituency. Uh, Cross-site exploits, uh, get some existing organizations uh, <clears throat> involved in the ICANN process. They don't have to become uh, slaves to the ICANN process or devote all of their time to it, uh, but can send in comments into these processes from time to time uh, to uh, let ICANN know that somebody from outside is watching and uh, somebody cares uh, and uh, put these positions into the 
uh, into the debate. Uh, we can set up quasi botnets by uh, if a few people get involved and interested, uh, each of you can draw a few friends into the process and uh, add a few more comments and uh, suggest comments. Other constituencies do it. The intellectual property constituency uh, submitted hundreds of comments that looked nearly identical simply by uh, sending out on one of their trademark association lists uh, a call for comments and a suggestion, here's what your comments might look like. Uh, and guess what? The ICANN forums were flooded with comments. Uh, yes, the intellectual property constituency thinks it is in tremendously important that uh, who is information, the data that uh, you put into uh, a domain name registration, continue to be available for anyone who wants to prowl through it, uh, because that's critical to protecting our trademarks. Hundreds of comments uh, said uh, virtually the same thing. Well, why, doesn't the, why can't the public do that? Uh, send in hundreds of comments to demonstrate uh, that there are interests other than, and uh, often even more important than, the intellectual property lawyers. Uh, and if we can do some of these things, we can get root on ICANN. We can eventually get uh, direct public representation uh, at the ICANN board level. Um, and I hope you'll help us to, to, to script some of these processes so that we can make it easy for uh, members of the public to join in, uh, tear down some of the daunting walls of acronyms uh, that tend to keep people from participation in the ICANN process. Uh, so when we're starting to think about uh, an attack, we start by uh, looking at uh, the, the target, uh, what's its value, what are its uh, <clears throat> attack points. Well, what is ICANN? Uh, there's the ICANN uh, logo. It's the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. Uh, it's a nonprofit public benefit corporation organized uh, under California law. Um, and <clears throat> here's its mission statement. Uh, mission is to coordinate at the overall level the global internet uh, system of unique identifiers, uh, and in particular to ensure the stable and secure operation uh, of the internet's unique identifier system, uh, domain names, internet protocols, uh, and uh, protocol numbers, uh, DNS. Um, well, that, that's a nice sounding uh, mission statement, stability and security sound good uh, to all of us, but we all know what happens to lots of mission statements. Um, they end up shelved, and uh, I can more often present this face. Uh, <laughs> this is, in fact, from its last public meeting in Los Angeles. They had a big gala uh, out at Sony Studios and the Imperial Stormtroopers uh, invaded to claim their rightful home. Uh, uh, so, uh, um, more practically, um, ICANN is involved with the oversight of domain names uh, and IP address uh, assignments at the <clears throat> highest level, uh, deciding whether to uh, allow the introduction of new top-level domains. Um, we, say we, we don't need to uh, explain uh, domain names and IP addresses in this crowd, I think. Uh, but what does it mean when ICANN coordinates their allocation and assignment? Uh, well, so far, uh, this organization has been around almost 10 years now. Uh, it's primarily been in a position of blocking the coordination and assignment of new top-level domains. Uh, it's been stalling the introduction of new or internationalized uh, top-level domain names. Uh, so even though it was set up in 1999 with the mission to expand beyond the uh, .com net org uh, and the limited set of country code like .de, uh, identifiers. We still have a very limited set, and many of them are uh, so-called sponsored domains. Uh, if you wanted a dot arrow, um, you probably couldn't get one. Um, dot museum. Anyone ever visited a dot museum website? <laughs> this was one of ICANN's brilliant ideas to create a domain space for museums. Well, most of them still live in dot org. Um, 
So what else has it done? It's been setting up trademark happy domain name dispute resolution processes. What do you think is going to happen when you give a bunch of intellectual property lawyers uh, the reins to set up dispute resolution processes uh, for challenging somebody's registration of a domain name? Uh, well, you get decisions like uh, one WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization, uh, panel's decision that VivendiUniversalSucks.com is identical or confusingly similar to Vivendi Universal. Uh, so that name, Vivendi Universal Sucks, was taken away from its uh, domain registrant, who might well have been trying to criticize uh, the Vivendi Corporation, uh, and given over to Vivendi Universal instead. Uh, we need the public to, to be explaining its interest in having criticism domains as a place to, to voice their concerns and not uh, have them all swept into the basket of trademark infringement. Um, it's been coordinating the allocation and assignment by uh, continually renewing VeriSign's contract to run .com, uh, allowing price increases on those uh, and limiting competition in uh, the domain name registration space. Uh, if any of those things concern you, come and join us and Hacking I can. All right. Um, well, Wendy, um, there is some truth about it, right? Uh, VivendiUniversalSucks.com uh, is quite similar to VivendiUniversal.com. So I think it's, it's a sort of honesty here. Um, why should you care? Do you want uh, I can to mess around with your data? Do you want uh, to have uh, data mining with the who is data? Do you want to have stalkers and spammers, you know, look at your who is data? Do you want to have monopolists? Do you want to have price increases which are absolutely unjust because, you know, you have a monopolist and um, they just uh, rule the price and say, hey, uh, the more domains you get, the higher the price. Um, I learned something at university about how market functions and somehow this was not included. It was just the opposite way, you know, you have more products of the same, you, you have no, um, no more investment in technology. Uh, so the price should go down, but here we go, in very sign um, the price rises. So if you look at the new TLDs, what sort of new TLDs do we get? Can you use those TLDs? If there is a uh, dot jobs, for me as a member of a trade union, this was really fun. You know, my first ICANN meeting, uh, a dot jobs was introduced and I was happy and I said, hey, great, you know, really um, bad jobs or well-paid jobs or, you know, whatever you could, uh, you could uh, think of, uh, of getting nice domain names. But unfortunately, those domain names are reserved for headhunters and companies. So there is no chance that we could use those domains. And um, of course, it is, uh, it is much more fun if you have a more uh, larger variety of domain names. And so there's an initiative right here to have a .Berlin. But uh, also there is a, a big step forward now in introducing internationalized domain names. Um, you might think, okay, this is probably much more important for Chinese people who really have different letters. Um, it is not as important uh, for Germans here uh, to have uh, IDNs, but it could be fun as we're here at the CCC to have some hexen, uh, dot hexen would be nice. Oh, what about dot Götterdämmerung? You know, there is, there is a bright variety, a broad variety, but of course, Chinese people are much more longing for internationalized domain names. So, what's about, Wendy already mentioned, uh, the whole intellectual property lobby, it is far too strong. And, um, and we do have to take care of the domain name system, actually a core, whoops, a, la, uh, a core issue uh, item of uh, ICANN, stability. But um, here in this nice building uh, last night, you could listen to Dan. And um, so we have to, um, you know, uh, protect the domain name system from Dan Kaminsky. <laughs> so, and if that, did not convince you yet to say, hey, yes, I have to do something about it. Well, there's another proposal. 
What about a budget of 46 million? Um, don't you think um, that a public benefit corporation should involve the public in that 